Good morning, Hagrid. Alice, is everything all right? I'm fine. Bum, is it okay if I come in for a minute? Yeah, sure. Come in. Thank you. Hey, I think I know you. You're from my high school, right? Yeah, we were in the same class together in junior year. We used to sit together at lunch too. Oh yeah, you used to bring in buckets of KFC. No way I'd forget that. I haven't seen you in over a year. What's been going on with you? It's complicated. I see you haven't given up the habit of biting yourself. I know you only ever do it there's something that's really bothering you. We can talk later in private. Over the phone maybe, if you want. I wouldn't mind having someone to talk with actually. I think I'd like that too. Speaking of phone calls, that's why I'm here. I was asked to come and pick you up in my car. Really? Who was it that called you? A girl who called herself Heather. Naturally, I wondered how she got my number. But she then told me that she was a close friend of yours. Mentioning you by name. She told me that a murderer tried breaking into your house last night, and that you were protecting her and someone else from him. She asked me to give her friend a lift to her relatives. I agreed upon it. Go truth be told. I just wanted to make sure you were all right. How did, how did she sound? Did she sound all right to you? She sounded really concerned about you and wanted to make sure you were okay. I assured her that I'd get you to safety. She seemed relieved and very thankful when I told her that. Would you mind if I tagged along with you? I need to get away from the house. I was actually gonna ask if you wanted to come along. So yeah, I don't mind. There's something that I have to tell you anyway. Mind giving me directions on where to go? Yeah, take the Salem Turnpike and ride it into Saugust.
the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. All those missing people. Do you think they're really? I don't want to think about that. What if he's still alive? I said, I don't want to think about that, Ike. The town of Revere, Massachusetts was forever hurt by the monster named Kira Yoshaldi. The surviving families of the victims killed by Odi will forever be waiting for their loved ones to return. The pain of their wounds will now only get deeper. What does the future hold for the few who live to see the dawn of a new morning? Herbert Mitchell, after dropping off Monica, is told by Alice that her mother had been murdered on that terrible rainy night. Unsure of their safety, the two of them skipped town together, where they would shelter under John Sutter's rooftop. Herbert and Alice eventually tie the knot and hold their hands in marriage in the winter of 1990. Alice gives birth to their firstborn son, Dennis, just under a year later. Alice would become pregnant again, but due to unforeseen complications, she suffers from a miscarriage and would never bear another child again. Herbert would go on to pursue a car ear in law becoming a prosecuting attorney hoping that someday he will come face to face with the one who caused the town of Revere so much pain and grief. Monica Sterling, under the watchful eye of her uncle, Brock Samson, pursues a higher education, earning herself a teaching degree, and would go on to teach at the Morial High School, though the trauma of that night will haunt her for the rest of her life. Heather Lockhart was last seen and heard from on July 15, 1986, and was never seen or heard from again. Thirteen years since the incident, the search for her whereabouts continues to this day. And so, for most people, the summer of 1986 passed like any other summer. Adi would continue to haunt the greater Boston metropolitan region over the next decade. Many will die, and their corpses will never be found. Cast under his shadow, a new generation will rise from under the ashes, shining diamonds in the dark, destined to be swept up in the crimson turtle wave of blood and vengeance. Because war, war never changes.